Hello everyone, B.O.B. here and welcome to another episode of Labcraft. Now, I do got a couple of projects uh, lined up for today, but first, let's catch you up on what happened in between episodes. So just another one of those clips in between episodes. I uh, logged on, uh, well, I guess it was yesterday I actually logged on to this right here. So you lost everything, here's some stuff to help out. P.S. Vote Swift for Mayor. Uh... And you know, the, like Swift was the one that, that dropped my welcoming gift off, like when I first started too. I, I think Swift definitely deserves my my vote. Look inside here, like uh, this is almost more than I had <laughs> before I lost everything. That that's amazing. So definitely, thank you, Swift. And and yeah, you you've gotten my vote for sure. Um, sorry, sorry to the other guys that are running. So there's some drown coming up on the land from the shopping district, uh, here at the shopping district. And I just killed one. And I got my first trident. I'm so excited. And keep in mind, there was only some of this stuff. I have been really busy down in the ravine, uh, starting to get things worked out on where I'm going to put floors and things like that. I got one bubble to put in place. And I dug myself a nice path straight to the zombie spawner, or at least one of the zombie spawners that are back there. Um, uh, so, I mean, I might start working on that today, but we, I do have plans to meet up with Tom Dimpleton at some point today, hopefully, uh, and we're going to start work on the ice shop. We're going to be partnering up on this. Uh, I'm just going to pay for the plot. I got some of the materials. He's got some materials. So we're going to just put our materials together and, and build a shop. And I was just getting ready to start packing up all my shulkers and and throwing them in my end chest here and I couldn't help but notice there's 13 diamonds here that I I don't know where those 13 diamonds came from uh, uh someone someone had to have dropped those off these are my diamonds these 27 that's what I had so yeah I'm not sure where those came from but uh thank you to, to whoever dropped those off but before I do I wanted to catch you up on some of the things that I have done around the base here as you can see, the ice farm is quite a bit bigger. I've just built three more modules like the first one you've seen. You might notice the, uh, <laughs> the grindstones here on the outside, and that's because uh, one thing I wasn't thinking about when I built it, if the farm overflows, it's going to break. So uh, you want to put immovable objects on the outside of this. Uh, if you followed the one in my tutorial, you were already at your piston push limit anyway, so it wouldn't have broke if it overflowed. Uh, but this one, I, I mean, it's not at the piston push limit. So, so uh, that was something I didn't really think about when I threw it together. But I, of course, corrected the issue there. Uh, just to come down here into the ravine, you see I got a little bit of a cattle farm started and a wheat farm over here. I started laying in this floor and it's going to kind of wrap around uh, on this level the whole way through the ravine. But I'm going to leave a gap in the middle, of course. You want to be able to look down in there. Um... We come back here into the corner. You see, I got myself a bubble tube in place. I'm gonna hop in here. Oops. Too far down. And this is where I wanted to go. As you can see, I have decorated the super smelter. Uh, the ch the input chests are behind these trap doors. Just kind of put those there, mainly to hide the hopper. <laughs> That's the only part I didn't really want to see. But I think it looks pretty good as it is, and it's still going to operate as as it was in the last episode. It's just a little more built in and hidden. It looks a little nicer that way. And I, as you can see here, uh, this will be my next floor down. And I started leveling out uh, another floor, but I didn't start laying in any uh, any planks or anything just yet. But I'll bring it down here. Started to just clean up the walls, get rid of like uh, some of the stones and things that I don't want. Like I want to get rid of all the diorite and the granite. I just have s just the stone and probably some andesite. I might put in some more cobble features, uh, but that that block probably isn't going to stay there. Uh, but I'll have another floor on this level here where I started to level things out, and that should be far enough below. The floor above that you know you're not gonna feel like you're bouncing your head off of it and then another floor down here probably at about y20 and then finally it'll have access to take me all the way down to the diamond level 
So, uh, yeah, I'm getting it all worked out. I'm thinking I have, like, a major intersection in this area. Maybe I can get a beacon uh, to kind of put in these crossroads. That would be a good idea because the spawner's back, back that way, sort of. Yeah, 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 you got to go through this tunnel. And I, it's not it's not too bad to get back here now that I kind of have a straight path dug. But, it, like, I don't know. I'm probably going to put in, like, an ice boat road or something. Uh, I just want to clear out a lot more of the area back here. <laughs> uh, if we come... You see, it's, it's kind of a haul. So an ice boat road to get back here a little faster might be a good idea. And right there is the spawner. Um, and there is another one back in this area somewhere, but I don't think it's close close enough to have them both active at the same time. So I don't know if I'm going to worry about that too much. Uh, it, as long as it's just a steady flow of XP, that's all I really need. Oh, I didn't see that iron up there. I'm probably going to. So I've come to the shopping district. Uh, I want to pick out a plot for the shop, even though Tom's not on yet. Um. I'm thinking right on top of this hill. Yeah, there's a skeleton horse roaming around here. I don't know if this belongs to anybody, but uh, here it is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm thinking this hilltop will be nice. I might just have to take it down like two layers. And that should, that should work out pretty nicely. And if you look down over the edge of this mushroom here, you can see I got a kind of a dotted line of, of stone blocks. And that is going to be the outline of the shop. And if you look around at some of the other shops in the area, you can see this one's going to be quite large in comparison. And that means it's going to cost me, it's going to cost me a lot of iron. Um, but I've been saving up. It's no big deal. I have that iron. I'm about to add 60 blocks of iron to that big pile over there. And here we go. 60 of them. Uh, there's barely any room. <laughs> okay. Ha <laughs> uh, that's a quick way to spend a whole bunch of iron. Now Time to start marking all this out so Tom knows where to build when he gets here. And with the help of this platform somebody built here uh, uh, above the bookshop, we get a better look at the plot now. You see I made like the rugged edges so uh, it kind of blends more into the landscape. It's not just going to be like solid lines. Um, I might want to try and terraform this side out just a little bit more so it's not such a boxy shape. But this in here, this corner... That that that's me terraforming, and I'm kind of proud of it. I I think it turned out pretty nicely. So uh, I'm gonna try and even out this side and uh, see if I can uh, get a hold of Tom, or even just leave the materials here for him to start working on the uh, the building part of it. <laughs> there we go. Tom did get on, and oh, he helped me out for a little while. Uh, this isn't complete. We still gotta we gotta put some towers on this. And I don't I don't know how well I can do with that. <laughs> what I think I might actually do is go do some farming uh, of of the ice because we're gonna need some of that. And then that'll give me a chance to work on my base. But see, we just have some towers that we're gonna bring up to a peak. Um, show you. You can have a look at the inside real quick. Oh, if I don't kill myself getting down here. Uh, so you can see we're selling snow. We're selling regular ice. We're selling the packed ice. And we're selling the blue ice. Um, this might this might change up the interior of this. Uh, but, you know, this is a shop to get us up and running for now. Uh, maybe get some sort of diamonds coming. And I think we did make one sale already. So... Uh, of course, we're going to split those profits up, you know, uh, between me and Tom. So, uh, no, I think I'm just going to leave the one diamond in there until there's two diamonds. And then that way we can actually <laughs> split, split the diamonds.
One thing we are going to need here in the shop is an ender chest. Um, and, and I only have the one, and I don't want to leave it because <laughs> I kind of need it. Uh, so I might make a special trip just to get the the ender pearl. I'll, I'll go to the end and, and, and kill a bunch of endermen just to get one ender pearl. Maybe, maybe an enderman farm is in order. I, I heard some people were asking for pearls earlier. That could be another potential business opportunity for us. Um, but yeah, for now, we got this partnership with Tom Dippleton up and running. Uh, like I said, the build's not complete, but it's there. Uh, hopefully, we can start making some diamonds off of it. Uh, for now, back to work on the base a little bit. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta repair some tools. <laughs> and I find myself back down here at the zombie spawner. Uh, as you can see, I got some redstone lamps laid out around this thing. Uh, what I'm going to do is have it set up so I can turn it on and off in case I need to get into maintenance. Uh, if you watch my old Survive and Thrive series, I did this, uh, back then as well. But it's going to take a few more lamps than what I got laid out here. I think it's going to be every couple of blocks or so, something like this. But, um... It's going to be a handy little gadget, and then I'm thinking I'll put some shutters up front here. All right, I just want to give you guys a little rundown on what I've been up to here. Uh, like I like I said before, I did this in, back in my old Survive and Thrive series, but... Well, piston mechanics were a little bit different back then, and I didn't really show I didn't really show the redstone. Um, but but I will this time. Uh, and, and as you can see, it's it's all fairly, fairly simple here. Uh, we got our shutters. That's on this switch here. And this is just set up with repeaters on different timings, so it kind of has, like, you know, a sequence to it. It's not just open and close. It, it, it opens from the center first and then uh, works its way to the outside and then vice versa. The timings, though, I feel like they could use just a little bit of work. But, it, I, you know, I haven't set one tick apart from one another, so. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I ain't too worried about that anyways. I mean, there's no real function for it. You don't even need the shutters. It's just there for show. Uh, the lamps, uh, I set them up on their own individual switch. Oh, I can... I still have torches in there, so I don't have to worry about them all spawning yet. But yeah, uh, so I can turn them on and off as I please. I'm going to put glass in this layer right here, so you know I ain't going to worry about anything spawning here. But I can take you up on top of the thing, show you just kind of how I ran the lines. Uh, see, just one main line for the lighting that's going into this center block here. And there's a redstone dust below that block. That's what's powering the, the lamp in the center. And then, you know, just repeaters pulling a signal from the other three sides. And then the, the shutters up here, are, you know, they're hooked up just like the ones down below. It's just... Uh, Repeater is all set to individual timings. They're supposed to be one tick apart, but it doesn't seem to open in the desired sequence. So, uh, yeah, well, I mean, it worked. Whatever. <laughs> and after many, many hours, <laughs> I, I think I might have myself a, a zombie spawner XP farm all set up, ready to go. Um... Now I I broke one of the one of the major rules of redstone here, and that is I I didn't test this at all. Uh, I'm using some techniques which I've never attempted before. Uh, this trident killer I I kind of just came up with on the spot, <laughs> uh, and then um, the bubble tubes I worked them a little bit differently, hoping to. Uh, increase efficiency well i don't want to get too close because i don't want to grab my trident but basically the tube's too wide and it's like a tube on one side and then signs holding back the water on the other and then down below uh the water stream is flowing onto a fence post which should in theory push the mob up into that bubble tube i'm i'm afraid uh, I'm afraid that this isn't going to work, and I really should have tried it out in a creative test world before I did it, but you know what, it's, 
it's built now might as well give it a shot <laughs> this could be spectacular or it could be embarrassing there goes the zombies let's go ahead and just turn that on now oh they're going up the tube oh sort of they're sort of going up the tube I don't, I don't know if my, uh, too wide bubble tube has actually increased efficiency. Um, seems like a lot of them are falling back down. Well, I mean, I suppose that could be easy enough to fix. Just fill in those blocks, right? But hey, I got some XP coming in, and that was the important part. Pardon the piston chambering, but I may or may not even fill these in. As you see, some of them, yeah, they are falling back down in, but eventually they, they get pushed down in here and they get killed and I get XP. Um, I don't know. It's, I, could, I, could, I could fill it in or at least fill in most of the tube. I think to get them into the water streams working, but they're just kind of coming back out. Uh, maybe they can see me there. Well, I don't know. They shouldn't be able to. I don't know. I don't know. But um, still got a lot of cleaning up to do around here anyways. And the roadway back is a disaster. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, I'm going to need an ice path. It's just too far to run every time. But yeah, I'm going to finish fixing up my pickaxe. And then uh, maybe take a trip to the shopping district. I haven't decided yet. Don't you hate it when your barrel won't close? What, or, or does that only happen to me? And as you can see, I did make my way back over here to the shopping district where Tom and I did make a couple sales. And I uh, went ahead and restocked those those chests and I, I put our profits to the side there. Um, but um, I think that's going to pretty much put, put, bring this episode to a wrap. I, I got a couple of big projects planned for the next episode. Um, well, maybe, maybe get a couple projects and the, the next one's going to be kind of a big one. Uh, I got to do a lot of grinding in between now and then. So, um, but you know, in the meantime, if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to hit that like button. And if you're interested in seeing more from me, consider hitting that subscribe button as well. I would like to thank each and every one of you for watching and wish you all a wonderful day.